everybody. It is time now for the weekly matchup show. Once again, it's student versus mentor. We're talking about Bob Stoops, who played under Bill Snyder when Snyder was an assistant coach at Iowa, coached with Snyder at Iowa later on, and then would coach under Snyder at Kansas State when Stoops was a co-defensive coordinator. And since 1999, since Stoops took over as head coach of Oklahoma, has coached against Snyder, and Stoops has done quite well, 7-1 and one against the mentor, Bill Snyder. So once again, it's Stoops versus Snyder. It's Oklahoma versus Kansas State in Norman, Saturday night, September 22nd. Notice the kickoff time, a little unusual. It's a 6.50 kickoff. I don't ever remember when OU's had a 6.50 kickoff, but anyway, that's the time of the game, and the game will be on Fox Television, not Fox Sports or FX or Fox College Sports. It's on the Fox Network, so it's on broadcast TV. It will be a nationally televised game. The Sooners come in as a 14-point favorite. Now, before we talk about the matchup, let's go ahead and talk about OU as far as players. And, of course, Tony Jefferson, you might have heard, had an injury issue um, in the first quarter of OU's most recent game, which was back on September the 8th against Florida A&M. First quarter of that game, um, spring is right ankle, didn't come back in the game. Matter of fact, did not practice last week. But Bob Stoops, during his weekly press conference um, on Monday the 17th, announced that uh, Jefferson did practice Monday and is expected to play. So that's great news there. Some more good news for the Sooners as far as players. How about Casey Walker? Returned to practice back on Monday, September the 10th. Didn't play the first two games due to personal reasons, but did get a week's worth of practice in last week, practicing this week. And that's important because you're going to need all the help you can get on that defensive front going against that terrific Kansas State rushing attack. So you got Walker back. Stacey McGee, however, is still suspended. Who knows if or when um, he's going to come back. But at least you have Casey Walker back, and that should help out with David King because you can still use David King on that defensive line, but you could also use him on the uh, defensive inside to uh, help out with R.J. Washington. Um, as far as preparation, well, last week, normally you would, um, to prepare for an opponent, you would have your first teamers go against the scout team. That really wasn't much of the case last week because last week, the Sooners, you could say it looked like August practice all over again. First teamers went against the first teamers um, during the bye week last week. So you could say that the practices were pretty intense. Now, uh, this week, they are going back to the first teamers against the scout team, and they've already begun their preparations um, against Colin Klein. Now, Klein's the outstanding Kansas State quarterback. Um, some even have him as a Heisman Trophy candidate. He's that good. No, you will have to be ready for him. So in preparation for that, Trevor Knight, an OU freshman quarterback, he's redshirting this year. Um, Stoops decided to use him as a replica, I guess you could say, to Colin Klein, using him um, during scout team for the OU defense to prepare against. Um, Knight 6'1", about 195 pounds. Not quite as big um, as uh, Colin Klein, but they decided to use Knight in practice to try to simulate Kansas State's offense, basically trying to make sure the OU defenders know where to be and what to look for when they see certain formations and tendencies. So that can only help in their preparation against the Wildcats. In terms of uh, which team is for real, we're going to find out. Is Kansas State for real? Is Oklahoma for real? Right now, you can say that there are some doubts about the Sooners. Okay, I'm not going to lie. There are some concerns there. Uh, fifth and one poll, the coaches poll, they dropped to sixth in the um, AP poll. But a lot of people aren't sure if OU's worthy of that ranking, primarily because of some of the things that we've seen the first two games. Yeah, they won both of them, and yeah, they won the most recent one, you know, 69-13, but that was against a horrible Florida A&M team that we knew you weren't going to be able to get better after playing a team um, like that. Florida A&M was just outmatched. And then the season opener before that against UTEP, a game in which Oklahoma was expected to win big after being such a huge favorite, they struggled in that. That one. Several reasons for that. Penalties, um, just lack of consistency, not protecting um, Landry Jones, and um, not tackling well, giving up uh, too many big plays. So, entering this week, OU knows that they're going to have to, you know, chime up. They're going to have to increase it another level or two levels to get ready for Kansas State. Can't have poor tackling against a team like this. They'll murder you. So, 
I think the extra week off helps Oklahoma big time. Remember Kansas State last week had to play North Texas, which we'll talk about in a second. So they didn't have that extra week to get ready for the Sooners. OU did, and hopefully um, that will show on the field come Saturday night, having that bye week last week to get ready for K-State. Um, if you're talking about um, Kansas State as far as their offense, it really, to me, begins and ends with Colin Klein. He's that important. Um, if you've never seen the guy play, um, he makes good decisions, pretty athletic, kind of a big guy. Um, they run a lot of what they call the zone read. Zone read basically means that Colin Klein can um, hand the ball off to um, Hubert, their terrific uh, running back, or um, Klein could also um, fake the handoff and then keep the ball himself. And also, he has shown the ability this year, unlike last year, to uh, really utilize a passing attack. That's right. Kansas State, they're really not what you would call one-dimensional anymore. They will show the tendency to throw the ball. That's where the Oklahoma secondary has to be ready for Tyler Lockett, terrific wide receiver and also a special teams player, and also Chris Harper as well at another wideout. You can't just load up on the run against Kansas State. You'll get bitten if you do that. And granted, you know, I'm not saying that Colin Klein throws the ball like Peyton Manning or Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers. I'm telling you, though, that Colin Klein did work on his passing game during the offseason, and he at least has a passing game. So Sooners have to be aware that he has those options. And by the way, you know, Stoops in the press conference says that Kansas State is a complex team to face because you're going to see different formations. You know, Klein can run this zone read, you know, under center. But we've also seen him do it in the shotgun formation as well. As far as Kansas State's defense, um, it's it's not a bad defense at all. Arthur Brown is their all everything linebacker, and um, I'd heard that last week he injured his ankle um, early in the game against North Texas. Did come back to play, but there has been concern about that ankle. I'm going to tell you right now, I'd be shocked if Arthur Brown doesn't play in this game. I'm willing to bet you he'll be play, he will play, and I'm willing to bet you that that ankle is is going to um, hold up fine. So. Um, anybody out there who doesn't think that Arthur Bryant ain't going to play, you're kidding yourself. Um, but this last week, you might be saying to yourself, how in the heck did Kansas State only beat North Texas by two touchdowns? They were huge favorites. They had just routed Miami. How did K-State um, get themselves in the ball game that was tougher to win than we thought? You have to understand something. Those kind of games are what we call sandwich games. Kansas State just beat the tar out of Miami, rushed for 280 yards in that game. They knew that they had Oklahoma coming up the game after North Texas. Who gets fired up to play the University of North Texas? Nobody I know, and it really showed. Not to make excuses for K-State, not to take anything away from North Texas, but after the game, Bill Snyder himself said in the metaphoric sense that his team um, on the sideline playing like they were, you know, they were basically approaching the game like they were sucking their thumbs. And they were on the field, they were playing like they were sucking their thumbs. They said that, um, you know, Bill Snyder said that the team just was not prepared. And it, it really did show. If it weren't for a, a big kickoff return for a touchdown um, early in that game after North Texas led 7 nothing, you know, who knows how that game would have turned out. Kansas State strong on special teams that showed with Lockett's return, but they needed plays like that um, to, to um, make sure that they didn't stay behind for long against the mean green. And entering the fourth quarter, it was still a ball game before K-State finally put it away. I'd be willing to bet you that Kansas State is going to come into this game against Oklahoma ready to play. Not just because of what happened last week against North Texas, but also because it's the Big 12 opener. And probably the biggest thing of all, OU beat Kansas State in Manhattan 55-17 to a year ago. Don't think Kansas State hasn't forgotten about that. So don't be fooled by last week's score against North Texas. K-State's going to come into this game ready to play. I know you better be aware. Um, key number one, we've already mentioned it. You've got to contain Colin Klein. I know they've got other weapons on offense, but I would be willing to put my paycheck on the following. You can contain Colin Klein. You're going to beat Kansas State. If Klein is, if he has big holes to, to, you know, to run through, if you're not putting pressure on him, then you're going to be in big trouble. 
You've got to be able to contain Colin Klein, and if you can do that, I think that right there is a blueprint for success. We saw that last year when in the second half, Kansas State's offense against OU went nowhere, and that game ended up being a blowout. I'm not saying this year's game will be a blowout, but if you can contain Klein, um, your chances of winning this game are going to be almost at 100%. Uh, key number two, protect Landry Jones, Oklahoma. So far, they have not done a good job of that this year. Already have given up six sacks. I think last year they gave up 13 sacks for the entire year, already six sacks in the first two games against inferior competition. So that's a bit alarming there. God protect Landry Jones. You can do that. Then he can utilize other receivers, and hopefully we'll see how you do that. They've really been um, glued into Kenny Stills quite a bit this year, um, even though the season is still in its infancy. But I can promise you this, K-State is really going to pay a lot of attention toward number four, Kenny Stills. So hopefully Landry will utilize those other receivers. But OU's got to give him time to throw the ball in order for that to happen. Key number three, um, make it happen in the zone. OU's done a good job of that this year. Against bad competition, sure. But ten trips in the red zone so far, ten touchdowns. So keep it going, Oklahoma. Kansas State's going to be a tough test. But... You got weapons, you got good running game, good passing game, belldozer formation if you need it. Keep that trend going of getting touchdowns in the red zone. You take field goals, but you'd rather have seven. And then finally, key number four, just like the church lady from Saturday Night Live once said, Well, isn't that special? It isn't that special. We're talking about special teams. Kansas State thrives off special teams. Last week, they were really aided with that Tyler Lockett um Kickoff return for a touchdown. I think he's like the third locket to play at uh, Kansas State. Of course, the lockets are from the Tulsa area, and all the lockets have been special teams gems. Oh, you better be aware of this. And K-State's had a reputation for blocking punts as well. And conversely, oh, you can make special teams their weapon as well. Justin Brown, the transfer from Penn State, we've seen the terrific things that he's done so far the first two games of this season um, with punt returning. He is a big weapon too, so... Contain Kansas State on special teams, but at the same time, make special teams your weapon as well. And also, Michael Honeycutt needs to be on his game as far as place kicking goes. Final thoughts in this game, Kansas State's going to be ready to play. Um, Bill Snyder teams in big games are typically ready to play them. And don't think that they'll be intimidated by playing on the road. Last year in Stillwater, Kansas State almost one at Oklahoma State fell just a little bit short. So I'm not so sure that the crowd's going to have a whole lot of an effect on Kansas State. Home field advantage will help Oklahoma, but it can't be the sole reason for them winning the game. I like Oklahoma to win um, the 14 points, a little bit too much for me. I'm going to go 35-24. to 24. I think K-State will get some big plays, but I think Oklahoma will have too much in the passing game, and I think they'll have too much in the ground game with both Whaley and, of course, Williams in the backfield and also Brennan Clay. I think Oklahoma has too much depth in the ground attack, and Landry Jones, I think his arm will be one of the differences as well. 35-24, I've got OU winning and getting to 3-0. A reminder, OU does not play next week their game after Kansas State will be two weeks from Saturday in Lubbock against Texas Tech. Just a reminder that my college football pick show will be on Thursday, September the 20th, so check that out. And my post-game show of OU Kansas State will be on Saturday, September 22nd, right after the uh, OU Kansas State game is over, probably about an hour, hour and a half after the game is over. So make sure to uh, spot that on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter as well. And also you can Google it and it will appear there as well. Boomer Sooner.